Now, you guys know Uber. They're by far the largest ride-hailing company here in the United States and in a lot of other places around the world as well. But it's also one of the most talked about stocks in the market. And lately, I've been receiving a lot of requests from my viewers to talk about the stock and share my opinions on it here in 2020. So in today's video, we're going to cover their business, their future potential, the current and future competition, and of course, the stock and their current valuation. And as always, I'll share with you how I feel about them as a long-term investment and let you know whether I plan to buy the stock myself anytime soon. Should be a fun one. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's go ahead and get started. What's up everyone? My name is Ale. Welcome back to my world of stocks. Let's go ahead and start by just doing a quick intro into what Uber does and how dominant they are in the market. And then we'll transition over to the stock and we'll just kind of go from there. Now, as I mentioned before, this is a ride hailing company that pays drivers to use their own vehicles, at least in most cases, as part of a kind of taxi network that all goes through the Uber app on your phone. And hey, so far they've, ha they've been having a lot of success with over 21 million trips a day, over 110 million monthly users across all platforms, including Uber Eats, which is a kind of similar service, but for delivering food. And that number has been growing by literally tens of millions of users every year globally, which by the way, they're doing a great job of expanding internationally as well to become a very large global company as they command a presence in close to a thousand different Different cities across close to 70 different countries around the world, which is very impressive. And because Uber was essentially the first ride hailing company to be very well funded that led to rapid expansion, they've been able to command a dominant leadership position in the market with about 70% market share in the United States, while the only other real competitor is Lyft at less than 30% according to Statista. Not to mention that Uber claims to also be number one in every major region that they compete in, including places like Europe and Latin America, with only ownership stakes in other companies that also gives them exposure to other large markets like China and Russia as well. On top of that, they are the third largest meal delivery service by revenue, only behind uh, DoorDash and Grubhub, according to Second Measure. But we'll talk more about Uber Eats a little later in the video when we cover profitability, as that's been a major drag on them. But going back to the ride-hailing market for a second, it continues to get larger every year. Even in places like New York, where taxis have historically been extremely popular and the cities uh, are even famous for them, uh, ride-hailing apps have actually started to see more pickups since 2017 after a meteoric rise in popularity in just a few years time. And the same can basically be said worldwide as the number of ride hailing users is expected to climb to over a billion users this year and then over 1.5 billion in just a few more years, while sales should also be in the hundreds of billions of dollars as well, which is extremely large and it continues to get bigger. And all of this has led to a ton of growth for Uber as sales soared by over a 100% in 2017, 43% in 2018, and then 26% last year. Now, obviously that growth has been slowing down for them, and I would agree with you if you feel that that's not exactly a great sign, but the next two years should still be comfortably over 20% each, which is still pretty high growth. And so when looking at the stock, it's as volatile as you would expect an exciting company like this to be that only IPO'd less than a year ago. It's technically uh, down about 2% since then, but that doesn't really paint an accurate picture of everything that's happened along the way as it initially climbed to over $47 a share before crashing all the way down to just $25. And then in just the past couple months, the stock has rallied very strong right along with the rest of the market in general as they're up by almost 37% so far this year alone and just about $6 away from their all-time high. Apart from the st uh, strong market rally though, uh, part of the strong performance is definitely due to the recent bounce back in quarterly growth as they were shrinking pretty uh, pretty hard there, only growing by mid to low teen percentages after IPOing, but in the last two quarters, they jumped up to 33% and 41% growth respectively. And another thing that likely caught everyone off guard was that this acceleration in revenue growth 
has also been coupled with improvements to their unprofitability, uh, despite the company still obviously being in the early stages of growing the business. Now, they are still losing money, but adjusted EBITDA losses are at least trending downward while margins are climbing higher. And that's because their largest segment, their rides business, continues to bring in higher profits every quarter while other segments continue to weigh them down. And in the case of Uber Eats, those losses have actually been getting bigger. Still, this is clearly a company that seems to have found its footing, at least in the right hailing market, and that's leading to improved performance, which, by the way, the CEO also made headlines recently stating that he expects them to actually reach adjusted EBITDA profitability by the end of this year, which is a whole year earlier than they had previously projected. Still, this company is not without their issues, and so far we've been focusing mostly on their positives, but that doesn't give a very good overall assessment of a company or the stock. So let's go ahead and transition now to some of their negatives, and we'll take a closer look at those losses. We'll briefly touch on the valuation, and then we'll finish up with their future uh, competition, followed by my overall conclusion. Well, for starters, they're targeting profitability in Q4 of this year, but that doesn't mean that the entire year will be the same. In fact, they're expecting an adjusted EBITDA loss of up to almost $1.5 billion at the highest point. And again, adjusted EBITDA is not exactly the strictest, uh, strictest uh, accounting measure, but even when looking at operating cash flow, which is just the raw amount of cash that you generate from normal business operations, basically your sales minus like the expenses it takes to operate your business, it's actually been negative for Uber for years and by billions of dollars, while free cash flow has been even worse, which also takes into account things like CapEx spending to keep the company afloat and stay competitive. Uh, anyway, the point is that these losses are not exactly easy to swallow when the valuation is still pretty high. Even if we ignore all of these losses and just look at forward sales by themselves, and not even tra trailing sales by the way, but actually like more optimistic forward sales, they still trade for close to four times that amount, which is also 260% higher than the sector median. Generally, we want the PS ratio to be closer to one or less. And just to give you some context, uh, even an absolute behemoth of a company like Amazon actually trades for a lower PS ratio. Obviously, this is not the end all be all. This is just like one tiny metric to look at. And when Uber does become profitable, we could see their earnings growth skyrocket, as is usually the case with young companies that just kind of start being profitable. But it's still something to think about either way. Uh, and by the way, Amazon also has revenue growth of close to 20% a year. So it's not like Uber is this like mythical creature with sales growth that nobody else can match. And of course, Amazon is a much larger and more diverse company as well. But going back to profitability for a second, I created this chart here to show you Uber's different segments by profits for the last five quarters. And you can see that the only one that's been positive and actually making uh, improvements is their rides business, while all others continue to be in the red. And in most cases, they're actually getting worse, like their Uber Eats business, for example. Now, their plan for making uh, Eats a profitable business is to scale it up like they did with Rides in hopes that it follows suit and becomes profitable in the same way that Rides did. But uh, there's some concerns over that strategy since Uber Rides is essentially a global market share leader while Eats continues to face strong competition both abroad and even domestically where, again, they're trailing behind in third place. And if that continues, then it's not going to be easy for them to benefit from something like economies of scale if they're continuing facing strong competition and need to spend a ton of money on discounts and advertising while also lagging behind in market share just to kind of try to stay uh, competitive. Although to be fair, a lot of that competition is also unprofitable and without proper funding, they'll likely need to exit the market. And we've already seen that happen with several other players, including, by the way, Amazon. Uh, so if Uber is able to kind of stick it out here, I think they could potentially gain more market share as time goes on, as the market kind of consolidates to fewer and bigger players. And hey, maybe that leads to profitability down the road because it should also mean less uh, Uber having to spend less money on things like discounts and advertising. But as it stands right now, it's still an area of weakness for Uber. And it's one of the reasons why a company like Lyft uh, absolutely refuses to enter that market. Still, there's really another concern that I actually think is a bigger issue 
than uh, Uber Eats. And that's going to be the rising competition uh, coming in the future in the rides markets, which threatens their only profitable business. And in my opinion, I think the future of that market is absolutely going to be autonomous because it means less spending on drivers, which could drive up uh, profits a lot higher. But there's a big problem here, and that's that there's some giant players looking to dominate this market in the future. And for example, you've got companies like Tesla, you've got uh, Google's Waymo, and then even overseas in places like China, for example, you've got Baidu, which is like the Chinese version of Google, and they've already started doing some autonomous ride hailing out there as well. But back home, we know that so far, Tesla has some very ambitious plans to launch an autonomous robo-taxi service, which they were initially targeting for the end of this year. But I think because of regulations and other issues, it'll probably be a couple more years before we really start to see it ramp up in a meaningful way. But it's still a major player that Uber has to think about and uh, keep in the back of their mind because if Tesla is competitive on price and they use already existing Tesla owners to just add their vehicles to the fleet, that robo taxi service could actually ramp up unbelievably fast, a lot faster than people think and uh, become a major threat to both Uber and Lyft by stealing a ton of market share. And I know this is kind of like anecdotal, but if I had to choose between an Uber or an autonomous Tesla, assuming that it's completely safe to do so, I'd much rather ride in the Tesla, and I think a lot of other people would too, especially if the same if it's the same price or possibly even cheaper. Keep in mind that theoretically, there wouldn't even be a driver to tip, so that could also be a benefit. Meanwhile, Google's Waymo continues to test their autonomous services in places like Phoenix, where they've already launched their Waymo One application that offers a self-driving taxi service, and they've even began testing uh, self-driving trucks and are currently using them to carry freight to their Google data centers uh, out in areas like Atlanta, which by the way is something that Tesla is also working on with the Tesla Semi. Anyway, the point is that not only is competition coming, but it's also extremely well funded. To be fair though, Uber is also investing heavily in autonomous driving, and it's another reason why profits are being held back, as they've built up a 1,500 plus person team of what they call industry experts in AI and robotics with multiple backgrounds, and it's leading to them building their own hardware, software, and other autonomous related IP. But so far, it seems that most of their tests is done on private uh, test tracks, and I haven't really seen anything that makes me think that they're ahead of either Tesla or Google. In fact, I'd assume that they're pretty far behind them, but with all this R&D that even includes autonomous flight vehicles, it would definitely seem to me that Uber is going all in on an autonomous future, and I think investors should be happy about that, even if it's kind of weighing on their profits, at least right now. But that overall competition is the reason why I'm personally just not interested enough to invest in Uber myself. And it's not because uh, I don't believe that Uber can't compete with those competitors, but it's actually just the, re just the fact that I actually like those competitor stocks more than Uber. Uh, for example, I already own Tesla. I would love to own Google stock, and I actually wouldn't mind uh, owning Baidu stock either. And a big reason why is because Uber is so heavily reliant on the ride hailing market. I really feel like they live and die by it. I know that they have other parts of their business like Uber Eats and Freight and Works, but at the end of the day, this is still mostly a pure play on the future of the ride hailing market. And as much as I love that market and as dominant as Uber is in that market right now, I still feel like I can get uh, plenty of exposure to that market through some much larger and more well diversified companies. So I don't really see the need to also invest in Uber. Instead, I think I'd rather just kind of wait and see how Uber deals with this future competition and if they can actually deliver on their promises of becoming profitable in the future. So I'll probably be staying on the sidelines for now, even though I do actually think that in the short term, Uber will probably do well, just because the market is doing really well, the market continues to grow, and there's not a lot of direct competition for Uber at this time. So they kind of just have a clear path to continue dominating this market, and that could lead to even more growth for Uber, which I think uh, Wall Street will like because it'll probably also mean that they get closer and closer to profitability. But it's just not a stock that I am personally excited enough about to 
uh, invest heavily in them. So uh, I'll be staying on the sidelines just at least for now. But uh, anyway, those are just my random thoughts. I would love to hear what you guys have to say down below. I'll try to read and respond to as many comments as I can. And uh, if you are invested in Uber, let me know. And if you are, by the way, I wish you all the best with your investment. I hope that it takes off for you and does very well for you. But uh, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, make sure you hit the like button. It really means a lot to me. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.